Good day, viewers. Welcome back to The Preaching Humanist with David Oliverio. That is I. All right, let's continue. And today we're going to talk about these dangerous beliefs using the quote from Sam Harris. Our beliefs define our vision of the world. They dictate our behavior and they determine our emotional responses to other people. Let's talk about how beliefs dictate our behavior. I want to talk about voting behavior. Very, very important. Why did over 80% of evangelical Christians in America vote for a guy named Donald Trump? Why do you think so many evangelicals voted for Donald Trump? It's based on their belief system. Last episode, I talked about the vision of the world. When you wear God glasses or spiritual supernatural glasses, your beliefs are based on this. You take these glasses off, your beliefs change. Your worldview changes. So why did over 80% of evangelicals vote for Donald Trump? Well, number one, they voted for him because they believe belief systems that he is God's chosen man. I used to be an evangelical Christian many, many, many decades ago and a young preacher. We, back in the 70s and 80s, voted based on our beliefs. We voted straight Bible. We told our congregations, we told every believer we could to vote straight Republican. My buddies and I, who are all young preachers, voted straight Republican because we felt and believed that the Republican Party was chosen of God. It's God's party. People vote based on what they believe. He, Donald Trump, is God's vessel to be used of God. That's why they vote for people like that. Well, you would say, why would people vote for a man who doesn't have very much a high standard of morality and ethics? Someone who's not a very moral and ethical man. Why would they disdain and mock our previous president, who was an upright standing man, who has a very good family? Why would they vote for someone like Donald Trump? Because God, according to the Bible, and I got the Bible right here. This is what I used to preach as truth. Because stories in this Bible indicate that the Christian God has always chosen men, especially men, of low moral character. He chooses vessels that are unclean, who have made lots of mistakes, so he, God, gets the glory. That's the Christian message. Now, a, lot of, a good example for you would be Moses and David. Let's take David in the Bible. Remember King David, those of you that remember these Bible stories. David had Bathsheba's husband killed in battle, so he could have her. And he committed adultery with Bathsheba. Two major blotches on David, but God still chose him to be a man after God's own heart. That's the Christian message. So based on people's beliefs, they vote a particular way. This becomes very dangerous to society. Here's another question. Why do the majority of Republicans or conservatives and many Christians on the Christian spectrum from modern Christianity to evangelical Christianity why do they support Israel and Jerusalem? And why do they support Jerusalem as the head of the state of Israel and the Jews and not for the Palestinians? Why do you think? Well, it goes back to 1967, the 67 war, year war in that particular year that happened between the Arabs, the Palestinians, and the Jews. Well, let me tell you where this belief comes in. Why do evangelical Christians and many conservatives promote Jerusalem and Israel? Their beliefs are in this. Now, where does it come from? It comes from this book right here. I've got quantitative evidence and empirical evidence right here for you. This is where they get it. So instead of quoting the Bible, I'm going to read it for you. I've been accused by many people for making some of this stuff up. <laughs> they say, I've never heard that in the Bible, David. That's not the Jesus I know. So let me just read for you from the Bible. And this is where these beliefs come from, these bad beliefs. So number one, Genesis chapter 12, verse 2 and 3. This is where they get the belief in supporting Israel and Jerusalem. 
I, God, allegedly, will make you, who's the you? Abraham, a great nation, and I, God, will bless you, Abraham. Now, right away, a lot of Christian apologists would say, no, the you is Abraham, not the whole nation of Israel or not the Christians and Jews. It doesn't matter. This is how many right-wing Christians interpret it is as the whole nation and the state of Israel right now. Now, it says right here, and I will make your name great, and so you shall be a blessing. And here it is, verse 3. And I, God, the Christian God, of course, will bless those who bless you. There it is. Christian right-wing America believes that this book is true, and God promises to bless those who bless Israel. There you have it, right here. So it says, I will bless those who bless you, Israel, and the one who curses you, I will curse. So evangelical Christians of America are going to support Jerusalem and Israel as a Jewish state. Not Palestinians, not anyone else. And I'm not favoring Islam over Christianity. I'm against all spiritual and magical belief systems because I think they're very dangerous to humanity. So this is where this idea comes from. And one more, let me go to the book of Psalms 122, very familiar scripture. This is why evangelical Christians support Israel and Jerusalem. Psalm 122, verse 6, you've heard this one. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Well, David, what's wrong with praying for peace? We are blessed are the peacemakers. Most of us want world peace, of course. But this is where they get the idea. May they who May they prosper who love you. May every individual prosper that loves Jerusalem and Israel. What does that mean? That means that if you support and pray for Israel and Jerusalem and do not speak out against them, you will be blessed. Most Christian Americans believe that America is like the new Israel, the new Jerusalem. We are specially favored above all the other countries because of our love for God, right? And that's the Christian message. This is where these ideas come from. They came from these primitive books. That's why it is so important that we understand why people do what they do, and it comes from what they believe. These are very dangerous ideas and, I, and beliefs, and I will continue to talk about this in detail in the next episode. So thank you for so much for watching the Pre Preaching Humanist with David Oliverio, where no God is required for a life of love, joy, peace, fulfillment, meaning, and purpose in life. Have a wonderful day.